Hey everybody, Ian Golden here with DJ Tech Tools. We've got Tractor over here, and today I wanna to show you the basics of MIDI mapping. So that means taking a MIDI controller, like this MIDI Fighter Classic, and mapping it to do whatever you want in the software. It's a really powerful technique and tool that you can use to completely customize your experience with DJ software. For this tutorial, I'm actually not gonna use a MIDI controller at all. I'm going to use the keyboard so you can follow along and you can do this mapping with me because the keyboard is very similar to a MIDI controller. First, what is a MIDI controller exactly? Well, I've got this program here called MIDI Pipe and MIDI Pipe shows me the messages that are coming from this controller right here. When I press a button, you'll see it says note on and when I release it, it says note off. It's that simple. It's really just telling the software what happened. Ian pressed a button, Ian let go of a button. So we can use those commands to control anything in the software. Let's head into tractor land, open up your preferences, and jump straight to controller manager. Now, if you were gonna create a MIDI mapping, you would add a generic MIDI mapping. And there you go. You would route it from your controller, in this case, MIDI Fighter Classic. I'd go ahead and route it there. Or if I, in this tutorial, I want you to add a generic keyboard mapping. In this case, the import is the keyboard, not a MIDI Fighter. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that everything's working. Um, if you're using a MIDI controller, you'll look in the upper corner here at the control icon and see if it blinks when you press a button. If that happens, then your software is receiving a control signal, okay? In this case, let's add our first command. So I was racking my brain trying to figure out what we should map something to, and I decided we'll just load a song and play a song. Or in this case, let's just play a song. So the first thing you wanna do is decide what is it that I want to be able to control. And this list, if you click Add In, is a list of everything in Tractor that you can control. And there's a lot of stuff in here. In this case, let's do deck common or the common controls in the deck and play pause. So that's the command that I would like to control. Now I need to assign it to something. Right now the command is doing nothing. It's just laying there because we haven't assigned anything to it. If we click learn, we can hit any keyboard on here and assign it to that command. Let's hit the A button. So we've now assigned A to that. If I continue to hit A, nothing's gonna happen. I need to unclick learn, and now if I hit A, we should see something happen in the device target, which happens to be deck A, and that works. Now if I click over here, we're gonna see deck A doesn't do anything anymore. It's now deck B. So there's a few things in basic MIDI mapping you do need to know, and the main thing is the interaction mode and the assignment. First, let's assign this to deck A. So you can assign this particular command to any one of the four decks. I want deck, the button A to go directly to deck A. Cool, so now it's always going to work. You'll notice, however, that it's not playing the track it's only playing it as I hold down the button. And that's our interaction mode. It's set to hold. There's a couple different options here. There's toggle, which means it's gonna to toggle between the states, on and off. Maybe that's what you'd like. Hold you definitely don't want, unless that's the feature that you'd like to create. And finally, direct. This says go directly to a value. So direct only works once. And there's two options. Zero is off and one is on. So toggle is going between zero and one or off and on. If we go back to toggle, we can toggle between them. And if we go to direct, we can directly go to off, which would be completely pointless, or directly go to on, which would get really frustrating because you can't turn the song off. So in this case, let's set it to toggle and those are really the only things you need to worry about in this mapping window. 
Let's say, however, that you wanted to create a safety control for yourself and you don't want tracks randomly playing. So you only want this function to work if you're holding down the shift button and pressing A, which is a really good idea because you might be typing, searching for a song and you search for, you know, Anthony uh, and you play a track in the middle of your set. So how would we do that? So don't be afraid of it. It's really simple on the keyboard. All we do is press learn, hold down shift and press A again and it recognizes that as a command. So now A doesn't work, it'll only work if I hold down shift and A. Dead simple, right? Awesome. Now, let's add a few more commands because that's the magic of mapping. You know, it's really not that hard to go over and click the play button. Do I really need to map the A button to play the track? Probably not. But what if I wanted this A button to be my magic get out of jail free card play deck A. Okay, so what we'd want is to completely set up the song in one click and add a few more commands. Let's add a sync command to turn sync on. Once again, I'm going to press learn, click on the button that we want to assign it to, and route it to the deck that we want to control. And in this case, I do want to use the direct mode. I want to turn sync on, so I'm going to do direct on. Let's see what would happen if we tried hold. I'm going to unclick learn so we can actually test that. You can see that now first of all I made a mistake. I assigned this one to just A and not shift A. So let's redo that. So they're both on the same command. So now my play is working but my sync is only working as long as I've held it down. That's the interaction mold hold. Instead, let's do direct, which sets to value one. You might think toggle would be good, but the problem with toggle is that your play and your sync could get out of phase. So if I had sync pressed manually, and then I used my command, well, the two would be offset. So now when it plays, sync turns off, and when I pause, sync turns on, which you don't want. That'd be really frustrating. So let's just make it direct and say, hey, when I press this button, please, turn sync on. Dead simple. Finally, I'm in the middle of the track right now, which does me no good. Let's add a command to jump to the first part of the track, which is usually a cue point. So let's add in. This time we're going to go out of deck common and into track deck. Don't ask me how these things are organized. We're going to go into queue and we're going to say jump to previous next loop. That's probably the best one. All right, let's assign it to shift plus A. Let's make sure that that's routed to deck A, so we're controlling deck A. And now let's go directly to the previous cue point. That's one way to do it. So it's saying when I press this button, let's go directly to the previous cue point, which is hopefully the first one in the deck. And there it is, shift play, go to the first. Now if we actually wanted to go to the first, let me just show you one other command. You can delete any line by just selecting it and pressing delete. You'll notice that these are all yellow. That's because they're the same, they're mapped to the same um, assignment. So if we added something else, just something totally random here, and mapped it to the button S, you would see that they're not grouped. And that's what these little orange lines are telling you is that these things are grouped. Okay, let's delete that guy and add a command to jump to the first cue point. And some of these things are really useful for that. Let's go to select set store cue point. Select cue point means jump to this cue point. Let's learn it, shift A, route it, deck A, and let's use mode now in this case, they've got a special button option section here for this guy. Set to value hot Q1. So always jump to hot Q1, whatever that is. In this case, hot Q1 is in the middle of the song, which doesn't do me a lot of good, which is why I like that previous hot Q uh, function. But it's there, and you could set it to jump to whatever you want. Hot Q2, hot Q3, and now those three things would happen together. 
super useful and that's how easy it is to get started with basic MIDI mapping. It's the same on the keyboard as it is on the controller. Just press the button and assign it to whatever your heart might imagine. If you create a mapping and you're into it, you might want to share it with the world by going to maps.djtechtools.com where there's a whole bunch of really powerful mappings made by us or made by other members of the community for all controllers and all software in digital DJ land.